Good morning, my name is David Gunger and Happy New Year. I'm gonna lead us in this call to worship this morning. Let your praise of God sound to the heavens. We shout the good news of God's almighty love. Let the stars, the sun, the moon sing praise to God. The universe that God creates sing its praise. Praise the Lord, alleluia, amen. Let us sing together this morning. This, this is Christ the King who shepherds God.
Hi, my name is Jana, and I'm from Mansfield Center, Connecticut. And now, a reading from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above heaven and earth. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him, Praise the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Away from the manger they ran for their lives. The tiny boy Jesus, the son they must hide A dream came to Joseph, they fled in the night And they ran and they ran and they ran stars in the sky but the spirit of God led down into Egypt from heaven to high no place for his parents no country or tribe and they ran and they ran and they ran When danger is nigh And keep us from Herod's and all of the light I love the Lord Jesus, the refugee king And we sing 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 and we sing
This is my winter song to you. The storm is coming soon. It rolls in from the sea. My voice a beacon in the night. My words will be a light to carry you to me. Is love a light? They say that things just cannot grow Beneath the winter snow Or so I have been told They say we're buried far Just like a distant star I simply cannot hold Is love alive? Is love alive? I still believe in summer days The seasons always change And life will find a way I'll be a harvester of light And send it out tonight So we can start again Is love alive? Is love alive? This is my winter song December never felt so wrong Cause you're not where you belong Inside my arms This is my winter song the storm is coming soon, it rolls in from the sea. My voice will begin in the night, my words will be a lie to carry you to me. Is love alive? All are welcome at the table of God. Every human is God's child. For Christ brings peace to all. Tearing down every hostile wall. So that the many may become one. One heart. One family. One new humanity. For God, who is love. And Christ, who is all and in all. Show no partiality and make no distinction. So neither race nor class, gender nor sexuality, politics nor religion, personality nor nationality, count for us or against us. 
The light of Christ enlightens all. Christ the prisoner and the naked. Christ the hungry and the sick. Christ the thirsty and the stranger. Christ the other. May God's spirit hover over our chaos. Our hatred and our indifference. Descend in our hearts with love and pleasure. Blow us out into the world to listen and serve. And set us ablaze to forgive and reconcile. For all are welcome at the table of God. Every human is God's child. I've been waiting for a light and a morning. I've been looking for a wonder and a sign. The night is lit by a single candle burning. But the dark returns when the candle's out of light. Oh, Simeon, have you ever lost the promise? After all these years, do you still believe in Christ? If ever then you hold that little baby, would you ask him, could he send me something bright? Something bright, something shining, something right here beside me. Son of David lifts my eyes I need you God to find me something bright Something shining The star that led the wise men to the manger been hiding for a while in the dark Herald angels come and sing the sky bright Well, what good is it if we never hear the hark? And if the just shall live by faith, never by sight If the consolation comes after the dawn would you give me light that guides me from the inside? Would you give me something to seek me when I'm lost? Something bright, something shiny, something right here beside me. Son of David lifts my eyes. I need you, God, to find me something bright, something shining, oh, something bright, something shining. find you in the waiting my prayers are so much softer than my cries maybe one day you can come and hold me maybe one day you can make me bright make me bright make me shine Make me right here beside me. Son of David, lift my eyes. I need you, God, to finally make me bright. Make me shiny. Oh, make me bright. Oh, make me shine.
taking it all in Floating up and dreaming Dropping into the deep end And if we're here long enough They'll write a song Second chances I don't need all the answers Feeling good in my skin I just keep on dancing And if we're here long enough They'll write a song Will you please join me in our generosity liturgy? Godliness with contentment is great gain. We bring nothing into this world and we take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which plunges the human heart into ruin and pierces it with many griefs. We are determined to practice generosity with free hearts, fixing our hope on God and not the uncertainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds, willing to share all that we have, laying up for ourselves treasure that will not decay, but will shine in the age to come. May this be true of our church. Amen. And now it's that moment when we invite you to share an ancient blessing with one another. If you're not in person, you can send a text message or an email or a silent prayer naming a name and sending that wonderful greeting, grace and peace grace and peace to you. Welcome to Good Shepherd New York. My name is Michael Rizzina, and I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, today, our reading is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2. And as you can see, I'm not in the Chapel of the Good Shepherd, but I'm here in a friend's house upstate New York, uh, taking some time, a few days with my family to rest and to enjoy the Christmas break. We hope that you are enjoying the Christmas break as well and are leaning into the Christmas festivities. Uh, today is Sunday. It is the seventh day of Christmas. And as we remember, there are 12 days of Christmas. And so we encourage you uh, to celebrate with us and enjoy uh, the time with friends and family and everything that makes this season bright and beautiful. 
Uh, Now a reading from our Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2. Hi, I'm Earl from Mansfield Center, Connecticut. And now a reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the, for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There is also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and praying night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is a very uh, peculiar Gospel reading at the close of one year in the beginning of another. It's fitting because it is rooted as it is in the story of Christmas, the aftermath of Jesus' birth, and we get some indications not only about Jesus' destiny, but about the destiny of those who would follow Jesus. And in some ways, it sets the tone for how we approach a new year. The first thing I'd like to point out is the mention of the Holy Spirit multiple times in this gospel story. And we see this of Simeon. Now, as I mentioned Simeon, I recall a few weeks ago, I mistakenly referred to John the baptizer's father as Simeon multiple times in what can only be some version of brain fog or long COVID or something, I don't know. But uh, somehow I messed it up, not calling him Zechariah, but Simeon. So apologies for any confusion a few weeks ago. But today we do look at Simeon's song, Simeon's prayer. And this is a song that's included in the Book of Common Prayer and is prayed regularly in Anglican prayer rituals. Simeon's song uh, is beautiful, but what we learn of Simeon is this was a man who was full of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit rested upon him, and indeed he was guided by the Spirit. Now what's often uh, painted in the Gospels is a corrupt picture of those who ruled and led within Jerusalem, but here we have a righteous person, or what the text says is righteous and devout. This person is in the temple doing their work and is something of a mystic as we learn that they have a sense of communication with God through the Holy Spirit, especially as it pertains to the consolation of Israel. 
Now at this point, I'd like to point out uh, what we've been pointing out about the mystics, that for anyone who drills deep into the presence of God, into uh, a form of being that the contemplative mystics have known, which is radical openness and radical surrender to the Creator, in almost every account, this leads to a widening and an expanding of consciousness and of perspective, not a, a focus or a reigning in of perspective. You'll notice that Simeon here is uh, longing for the consolation of Israel, not just his own consolation. And when we uh, spend time in union with God, it stretches us to consider uh, the concerns of those beyond us, beyond our own self-interest to the wider interests of others. And it's one of the reasons I've been so proud of our community during the season of Advent, as we have tried to center the needs of those beyond our community uh, through our Advent offering. And I'm excited to share that we've raised uh, around $25,000 for uh, those three families uh, who we've been focusing on and uh, praying for. Um, our dear friends, and we're so excited to be able to uh, disperse those grants uh, and offer our love, our tangible love, which is a sign, I think, of uh, God's Holy Spirit among us. Um, notice also that his hope is not only for the consolation of Israel beyond his own hope, but in his vision, in his song, he has an imagination guided by the Spirit that this Messiah, this child, will bring all people together, that it's for all peoples, that there will be illumination for the Gentile and glory for the, for, the, uh, for the Jewish person. And these two are considered one people. Uh, I also think that that is one of the reasons for uh, Simeon's warning. He essentially sets the expectation with Mary and Joseph that though this Messiah is anointed by God, though this Messiah is for all people, though this Messiah will illuminate the Gentiles and will bring glory to, the, to his people Israel, that there will be significant opposition, that he will essentially make the inner thoughts of people made known, he will bear them. And that exposure, that revelation, that illumination will be something that many cannot handle, that many cannot stomach. The inclusivity of Jesus and of mystic prophets like uh, Simeon here and Anna, all of them can see that God has loved and made everyone and everything and is working to bring everything back together in reconciliation. And it is a limited sort of fleshly or human perspective to try to draw boundaries around the work of God and say God is only concerned with this group or with this place or with these people. Both the prophets and uh, the uh, characters in the story point to a brighter and broader picture. And so when Simeon says all people will be impacted and all people will either be illuminated or experience glory, he knows that this is going to be difficult for that sort of ego uh, and also the instincts of empire that try to rein in and control God's gifts and God's presence. And so as we come to the end of a year, and we look into and peer into uh, our own destinies for a new year, I'd like to encourage us in two fronts. First of all, to uh, be open to the Holy Spirit, uh, to be committed in a, in a year 2024 of uh, engage, being engaged in practices that will draw us near and give us a sense of union with God, that will put us in those places where we can be sensitive to and open to God's voice and God's guidance. It's interesting to think about scenarios where perhaps someone wasn't open. What would have happened if Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple and there were no devout and faithful people who were open and sensitive to the Holy Spirit? How would their story have been different? How would their trajectory have been different? Now, of course, that is a wild speculation that nobody can answer. And yet it reminds us that we, each of us, have an important part to play in how God is showing up and healing and reconciling our world. And unless we invest time and unless we um, allow our circumstances, and in many cases our pain and our brokenness, to open us up to the, to the radical love of God, to spend time with God and to be open to God's leading, we may miss those, those chances to be a healing vessel, to be a reconciling agent for God's purposes in our world. 
And so I want to encourage us as a congregation as we jump into 2024 uh, to make it a priority to be open to the Holy Spirit, um, to be, you know, as, as best as we can, righteous and devout people uh, like Simeon, uh, who the Holy Spirit can rest upon and who the Holy Spirit can speak to and who the Holy Spirit can guide. Now, I know that some of you come from traditions where uh, that language and even those practices were used in weird ways, especially with power dynamics. Uh, you have some people who are like the anointed ones who can hear from God, and you have others who just kind of fumble in the dark. And, and frankly, um, we often set expectations for how God speaks or how God leads that disenfranchises some or marginalizes some people's experience. And so I just want you to know uh, that whatever your religious background or your, your upbringing, know that it is possible to be connected and close to God and to be sensitive to God's guidance in ways that God speaks and guides you. That you don't have to copy and paste someone else's experience into yours for it to be valid. Uh, there are many ways in which God leads and guides and speaks. What's most important to focus on, though, is our own sense of love and trust toward God, our own sense of surrender toward God, and our own willingness uh, to put in the time uh, to be silent and to be quiet, to create space for a voice that is beyond our own. Now, in addition to that, I also think it's important in 2024 to brace for opposition, to know that God's inclusive and expansive love is indeed controversial and will always be thwarted and opposed by people who have an interest in preserving their own group identity, their own ego projects or interests, and uh, are looking to bolster and secure those. I think as we come into an election year, especially, that can become you know, hyper-tribal and identity politics can begin to slice and dice us into different groups that can be weaponized and we end up opposing one another or thinking poorly about one another or being uh, you know, poisonous in our rhetoric. I think it's important for us to carry this prophetic vision of Simeon and Anna of the reconciliation of all peoples, that Jesus came to include and reconcile all, that God loves and is inviting all, and that as we um, move forward into the year, that we try to center the love of God and the purposes of God in how we understand ourselves and in how we understand and treat other people. And it can be one of those things that as a community, we hold each other accountable to. I mean, Lord knows, I have my fair share of moments where I fall back into the ego trap. I fall back into those like tribal instincts and everything, you know, about uh, a circumstance or maybe about someone's words or uh, as, as uh, the prophet here, Simeon says, uh, those symbols, Jesus will be a symbol, he says, uh, for um, separation uh, among many. And people are like that for us. Moments are like that for us. They become symbolic and they incite something within us that uh, we often, you know, just simply react to. But I think the contemplative way is to be able to get beyond our mere reactions to people or to circumstances and to take a step back, to create some space between whatever it is that's stimulating us and our own response to it, and to allow room for God to guide us, God to shape us. Um, and I think that that is what I'm committing to in 2024, more space between the stimulus of whatever it is that would be in opposition to God's purposes in the world and my own reaction. Because if I don't have that space, I know that I'll be found probably opposing God's purposes myself. And so may we all together, like Simeon, open ourselves to the Holy Spirit and expect that opposition that comes to God's inclusive purposes in our world and in our lives, even in this year so that we can be those beacons of hope, that we can long for the consolation of the people of our planet, and we can join God like Simeon in the healing and the renewal of all things. Amen. And now that we've reflected on our gospel, we take a moment to declare our faith. This is the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now that we've declared our faith, we offer our prayers. These are the prayers of the people. Join me now in the prayers of the people. Our Creator and our God, as we look towards a new year, let us give thanks for all we hold dear. Let us release our grudges, our anger, and our pains, for these are nothing but binding chains. Let us live each day in the most loving ways. We each have our hopes and expectations for the year that is ahead of us, but you alone know what it holds for us and only you can give us the strength and the wisdom we will need to meet its challenges. So help us to humbly put our hands into your hand and to trust you and seek your will for our lives during this coming year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our source in the midst of life's uncertainties in the days ahead, assure us of the certainty of your unchanging love. In the midst of life's inevitable disappointments and heartaches, help us to turn to you for the stability and comfort we will need. And in the midst of our daily preoccupations and pursuits, open our eyes to the sorrows and injustices of our hurting world and help us to respond with compassion and sacrifice to those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, as we move deeper into another election cycle, bring our divided nation together and give us a greater vision and imagination of what you would have us to be. We pray for our nation and its leaders during these difficult times and for all those who are seeking to bring peace and justice to our dangerous and troubled world. We pray, we pray especially for those suffering in the Middle East, in Israel and in Gaza and the West Bank from violence and oppression. May our hearts and minds be open, keep us from complacency, stir us to action, guide us to follow your way that leads to peace and flourishing for all your beloved children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our sustainer, as we look back over this past year, we thank you for your goodness to us, far beyond what we have deserved. We pray for all who have departed this year, that they will rest in the peace of your presence. We pray today for Karen Gutowski Zimmerman and her family as they grieve the loss of Connie Gutowski. We pray for Katie Keichlin and her family, mourning the loss of Joan Thompson. We commend to your mercy, Connie and Joan. We commend to your mercy, every innocent, every child who has been lost to violence. We commend to your mercy, any others who come to our minds. We pray that they rest in your eternal peace. This we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who by his death and resurrection has given us hope, both for this world and the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And now having prayed our prayers, we make space for confession. Would you join me in holy memory, considering the week behind us, the ways that we've fallen short of love, and ask for God's help to hone in on a memory that matters. And remember, it's God's kindness that leads to change. So if there's any image of God right now that keeps you from soberly looking at your life, simply discard it with every exhale. And with every inhale, receive afresh the tender mercy of Jesus Christ. Friends, know that you're not alone. Whatever memory is coming to the surface of your mind right now, they come to all of us. And so right now, I invite you into this ancient and corporate confession. Would you join me in this? 
Most merciful God, we confess that we've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we would delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now, friends, hear the good news that as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love toward you. And as far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove our transgressions from us. You're loved and you're included and you're forgiven in Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to this table. Again, this table which tells us there is no distinction, that there is neither male nor female, slave nor free, Jew nor Gentile, Republican or Democrat, gay or straight, black or white, all the distinctions that we create. Jesus obliterates through his mercy and love and inclusion. And so we come to this table and we ask God to grace us once again. And we begin with gratitude. So would you join me in this ancient prayer? The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God, it is good and beautiful to say thank you. And right now, we hear our own hearts and voices lifting up with the angels and archangels of Isaiah's vision, who say, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and cup and he blessed them. After he took the bread, he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we welcome you risen Christ. We thank you for this body, which is broken and given. May we be broken and given for our world. Likewise, Jesus took the cup, and after he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance, remembrance of me. And so we welcome you, risen Christ. We thank you for this cup, which points us to the way of forgiveness and reconciliation and truth. Amen. And now, friends, we declare the mystery of faith. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And these are God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God. Amen. And now, friends, we invite you to receive Holy Communion. Our practice is an open table. Any drawn to the love we see in Christ are welcome to come. Let this be a gesture of your open heart to receive the love that you find there. And our practice is typically to take the bread and dip it in the cup. Let us receive Holy Communion together. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us, Good Shepherd New York Online. I'd like to give a few updates on uh, the end of year uh, sort of giving uh, initiatives. I've already shared a little bit about our Advent giving uh, uh, campaign. Uh, we were able to raise $25,000 uh, for the three families that we've been talking about, and we're excited uh, not only to disperse those grants, but also uh, to share with you uh, some of the responses that come along the way. It's our little way as a community of trying to bring hope and light and love to the people that we actually know and have relationship to. And so God bless you. And I'm so proud of you uh, and our community uh, for pitching in uh, to be that kind of blessing. I also wanna give us an update for our uh, Digital Church 2024 campaign. Um, our goal is $250,000, which is $50,000 more than our goal last year. And currently, we're actually well behind pace. Uh, we're at about $26,000 at the time of this recording uh, for the campaign. And uh, we just want to share with you that we, as we've said before, are willing to do uh, as much or as little as we can get funded. Um, we do want to share with you just what sort of like the costs are and uh, what your money goes toward to, to create 
uh, and then kind of share a picture of the different tiers that are possible, uh, depending on whatever we can raise uh, for this campaign. Um, you know, the, the ideal picture um, is for a robust uh, digital church program like we've had last year with some upgrades in both connectivity uh, and administration. Um, of course, uh, for us to do this in a sustainable way, and we shared this at our digital retreat, um, to do music, we can't, uh, you know, have the uh, burden of a weekly uh, filming session. Um, it's essentially like producing a TV show every week. And though we did that for about a year and a half, uh, we found that that was not sustainable. Uh, and so our approach has been to gather our Good Shepherd Music Collective for about a week uh, at a studio where uh, we film and record uh, songs for the entire year. And we get this done in a, in a sort of batch method that, uh, you know, is, allows us to be efficient and for uh, Jeremy Stanley, uh, our editor and videographer, to be able to sort of edit at a pace that works for him throughout the year. And this allows us to create and offer new music uh, every week as we weave in old songs as well. Uh, it's also a blessing to our artist community as one of the things that we love about Digital Church is we're able to patron the arts and show the artists uh, not only how much we love and appreciate them, but to give them a creative outlet to create sacred music that not only blesses our community, but blesses uh, the wider church community as well. Um, so our, our music is a big piece of that. And to fund that, it costs about $100,000. Um, then we have, of course, the vi weekly uh, video editing process uh, and filming process, which uh, Jeremy Stanley and sometimes a few others are involved in, which costs about $78,000 a year to fund. Uh, and then in addition to that, uh, we have things like uh, Alex, who helps uh, connect uh, people to digital groups and helps with uh, things like planning our digital retreat and helping facilitate our digital retreat. Um, this year, we'd also like to add some administration help as well uh, as planning things like our band camp where the Good Shepherd Music Collective records and planning things like our uh, digital retreat uh, and some of the expanded ways that we intend uh, to, to function where we have a platform where we can connect. All of that requires a little more care and a little more time and we'd love to be able to uh, fund uh, some help along those lines. Um, now, we want to be clear, uh, myself, uh, David, we uh, don't make any more or any less based on uh, what we do with Digital Church. Um, we simply, you know, out of the margin of our time, uh, give to help create this. Um, and so I guess the bare minimum, if we couldn't afford to create music, uh, to have new music every week, and if we couldn't afford uh, to have uh, weekly editing um, from, from Jeremy, uh, we could rerun music and uh, I can film uh, the sermons as I do every week, and we might need some light admin help uh, to facilitate readings and such. But we really and truly can do as much or as little as you want and you want to invest in. Uh, and I think and know from our feedback at our retreat that this is something that blesses you, that this is something that you want. Um, so I'd encourage you as we come to the end of the year, today is the 31st, it's the last day to give a tax deductible gift for 2023. Uh, we will be, as we always do, uh, expanding this offering to, through the month of January uh, so that December and January are the months that we're focused on raising our goal. And some of you have inquired, uh, can I just give in a monthly way toward this? And of course you can. You can select in the drop down menu Digital Church 2024 and you can select a recurring gift if that's best for you. Uh, but we, you should know that we do need to hit a certain minimum at the beginning of the year because uh, to do the music and to do band camp like we do it. Uh, it is a larger expense and it happens in the first part of the year. Uh, so it's important for us to be able to secure as many funds as possible to be able to get that uh, off the ground uh, and to have uh, the kind of experience that we are able to create through Digital Church. Um, so just know our hearts. Uh, we, we love you all and we love this ministry. Um, and it is a joy for both me and David and our staff to give of our time uh, to help create it. It's also a blessing to our artists and our musicians and our videographers and everyone who helps create it. 
Um, but uh, we do need it to be funded in order to make it possible. So we hope that you can make a gift, whether big or small. Uh, I know some of you can maybe only give a couple hundred dollars to this, but some of you could give $50,000 to this and help us meet our goal. Uh, we just simply ask you to be led by the Holy Spirit uh, and in prayer uh, to give and invest in this important ministry. And so with that, uh, I, of course, remind you, you can go online to goodshepherdnewyork.com and find the Give tab to see all the ways that you can give. Um, perhaps the easiest way is simply to text Good Shepherd NY to 77977, and you can select Digital Church 2024 in the drop-down menu to make your gift. Um, if you have a stock contribution that you'd like to make, or if you have maybe a donor advised fund that you'd like to uh, appoint, um, the information that you'll need to complete those are on our website. And so we pray God's blessing upon you as we uh, head into 2024, and we're extremely optimistic about all that God has in store uh, for our community here in New York and our wider community around the world. God bless you. May the God of light, love, and mercy be in your hearts and spirits this day. Go in peace, and God's peace will go with you. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here. Christmas tide, there is hope tonight. Christmas tide, our hearts are open wide. Christmas tide, bring us peace tonight. Christmas tide, we thank you for your life. Bells ringing and Bells ringing and we will sing Christmas time